bad time mode Super Saiyan Matt section here. Before we get started, there are some spoilers and topics that may be hard for some viewers. So, before we continue, if you don't think you can handle this, please click out right away. You won't hurt my feelings. I don't want you having a bad time. If you decided to stay, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Good morning, everybody. It is currently 10.20 in the morning. I just woke up, and my name is Matt. I'm going to be doing something there. I know, surprise, surprise. I'm moving my camera back. I thought of this because since my week for school technically ends around Thursday, yesterday, and I do my recordings Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I had an idea. So, my schedule for Thursday requires, you know, same as Tuesday, Thursday classes, which I'm not going to get into, but on on the last class at 5.30, I have a movie class. And <laughs> there are some pretty good movies. Um, since it's technically the fourth week, um, I'm going to just do a quick synopsis of the first three, and then I'll get into um, greater depths on this week's movie. Which, holy crap, are we starting this thing off with the humdinger? Let me take a sip of my banana milk. Anyways. So, the first three movies we saw in order are Pulp Fiction, um, Run Lola Run, and Howl's Moving Castles. So basically, a classic, a uh, weird German movie, and anime. So, let me just give you a quick synopsis, and then we'll get more in-depth on this week's movie. Pulp Fiction. I highly recommend watching this movie. Holy crap, is it funny. It takes place, like, out of sync with what you think would happen. Like, it starts off with a scene in, um, in a diner, and they shoot him up, like, two, like a couple of shooting shoot up. And it ends with that scene. So, um, I don't want to give too much away, because I do want um, some of you guys to watch it. Now, I do have to put out some warnings, especially for this week's movie. Holy crap. Um, some movies contain violence. Very harsh language. Um, and I'll give more later on. But, for those of you who don't know what Pulp Fiction is, it has um, John Travolta, I hope I'm saying that right, it's one of the Blues Brothers, um, Samuel L. Jackson, which should be enough reason to watch it, um, Christopher Walken, just to name a few actors, um, I'm missing some actresses, but if you still don't know what Pulp Fiction is, it has this iconic line. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Yes. Then you know what I'm saying. Yes. Describe what Marcellus Wallace looks like. What? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time. He's, he's black. Go on. He's bald. Does he look like a bitch? What? Does he look like a bitch? See what I mean? I mean, it's pretty good. It is a pretty good movie. Um, like I said, because of the language and the violence, it's not for everybody. Um, I definitely rate this, um, if you feel like watching a good funny movie, an adult funny movie, um, I definitely would highly recommend watching this. Next movie, Run Lola Run. It's weird. I will admit that it's one of the weirder movies. Not the weirdest movie, again, that title goes to this week's movie. Oh, again, holy crap. Run Lola Run is a German movie that takes place some in like a very small time frame basically this chick has the ability to reset reset time it's weird but she also again her ability to, to control time she screams like she just screams she's like high pitch like she's getting slowly stabbed and she can't move like that kind of bloody murder scream. Oh, oh my god. It makes no sense. In one of the scenes, she didn't scream. And one of my classes was like, wow, I'm surprised they haven't screamed yet. Then she screams and she's like, oh, never mind. <laughs> but oh, it was so weird. It, it also mixes in some cartoons. Like some very, very scribbly cartoons. Okay, it's fine. It's fine, I guess, if you really want. But, if I wouldn't. It's one of the classics, like the greatest classics of the modern age. 
if you feel like watching it, I just recommend turning on subtitles. That's all. Next movie. How's Moving Castle? It's an anime. It's... I mean... I already have to knock off. Highly recommend it, because anime's not for everybody. I mean, I happen to like it. Proof is back there. Back here. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Damn. But... I mean, I liked it. It was weird. It also mixed in a lot of fairy tale aspects, like true love's kiss breaks a spell, or like from Beauty and the Beast, a certain amount of time, and then you realize, oh shit, I just gotta do this. Again, I'm not gonna spoil it, because I know some people might want to watch it, and I don't want to just spew out information for you guys. Um, if you like anime, I recommend watching it. If you like fairy tales in both anime, go ahead. Next movie! Okay, this week's movie. Now we're getting into the nuts and bolts of it. Mulholland Drive. Oh. My God. I. I have no words for this movie. Now. If you want to watch this movie. It's rated R. And why do I do this? The air quotes. Oh, there is a crap load of titties everywhere. Oh, my God. There's that. There's signs of depression, signs of suicide. There's very adult content in there, if you haven't noticed already, with the hanging boobs. But, in language, again, that doesn't overpower the fact that there's titties everywhere. Oh my god, I don't know what to think of this movie. It's one of those movies where it's like, okay, I'm going to spoil this movie. If you feel adult watching this movie, and you don't care about crippling depression or suicide. Like, if that doesn't bother you, I cl recommend clicking away. Go ahead and watch the movie. If you're going to be still here, then... More power to you. You just want the spoilers. You want to hear me rant about this movie. Okay. If you're still here, then good job. You want to hear spoilers. Excellent. You get to hear me rant. It's... Uh, I don't... It starts off weird. Alright? So, apparently, according to my professor, it's was supposed to be a pilot for a TV series. Okay. Fine. Let's just go with that. Then it just... It starts out... Like a green screen, but it's purple. And there's just people floating in the air, dancing. It never even shows up. There's no explanation whatsoever about that scene. Then, <laughs> the acting is hilarious, let me say that. There's one scene where, after getting into a car crash, this, the actress walks out, she's standing perfectly fine, and then she just kind of flops over. It's great! <laughs> it's, it's honestly great. Um, but like I said, it's not for everybody. Um, later on in the movie, they, she meets this lady, apparently it's going into acting, meets the car crash she, and eventually, later on, they fall in love, and oh, 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 oh my god, it got so weird. Like I said, my professor's like, oh, there's gonna be nudity in this, and we're like, oh, okay, that's great. And there was nothing. There was nothing. And then at one point in time, the uh, main character, uh, Betty, her name was Betty. Um, she's like, oh, you can sit in my bed if you want. And I'm thinking, oh, are you going to do what I think you're going to do? And then the car crash, she, her name was um, Rita. She walks over. She's like, okay, cool. She takes off a wig. Again, let's go with that. It's later on. It's explained why. And then she walks over to the room and she takes off her towel. She just got out of the shower. She takes off her towel. Boobs everywhere. And I'm thinking, oh, oh, here we go. I know this is going to go down. <laughs> Gets in bed. And Rita's like, oh, good night, Betty. Kisses her on the forehead. And then they start making out. And we're thinking, oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, my God. Next thing you know, apparently Betty was wearing a nightgown. Because next thing you know, she takes off her nightgown. And there's more boobs everywhere. And they get, oh, no. <laughs> I was just sitting there thinking, oh, it's one of those. And this was after a weird scene where an old guy and a young chick were acting and they were making out. 
he touched her ass. And I'm like, oh, this is weird. This got weird. And you think, and I thought, oh, this ain't gonna get any worse. There's this. <laughs> oh my god, I... Okay, again, let's just go with this. Then things got weird. Things were starting to get even weirder. Not as much as the fact of... Okay, there's a sex scene. Yeah, there's boobs everywhere. Okay. Fine. Alright, let me just sidetrack for a minute. There are some funny scenes in this. There's one... There's one scene. Again, this movie is not for everybody. But there's this one scene where this, the bouncer walks in. He's looking for this um, director. Okay. And the director's ex-wife was like coming in trying to like kick him out. And it's a big dude. It's a big burly dude who gets the stereotypical stick blonde. And it's the guy, the lover, the, her new lover, who's Billy Ray Cyrus, comes and tries to clock him. The guy just goes, whack, and he's down. She's getting on his nerves. The next thing you know, he's like, clenches his fist, and he goes, whack, and then she's on the ground. And all this time, they're just playing smooth jazz. They're just playing smooth jazz while he just clocks these two people. <laughs> it's great. They're, as weird as this movie is, it is funny. You'll see why it's weird in a second. So going back to the lovebirds having sex. Rita ends up... I don't know if she's awake or asleep. Or she's sleeping with her eyes open. But it gets so weird. She starts saying silencio. She starts saying stuff in Spanish. It was never inclined that she knew Spanish. So like, okay, fine. I'm just sitting there just confused at this point. I'm just seeing them just take off their clothes and just start going at it. I'm just thinking, what the fuck is happening? I think I was like that beforehand. I, in all honesty, I was just so confused. Once she started saying Spanish words, I'm, once she said silencio, I'm thinking, why is she speaking Spanish now? Um, then they went to a nightclub called Silencio. And then there's a lady. Everything's a recording. Everything's an illusion. That's a key, apparently. Going to my professor. I need some banana milk. This is getting, it's getting intense. So. This magician comes out. Betty starts having, like, a seizure. And I'm thinking, what is happening? Betty, are you okay? And, um... He says, everything's an illusion. He disappears. And then this lady comes out and she starts singing. It's a cappella. Beautiful. It was beautiful. And then she ends up passing out and it's still recording. I guess it's just to show, you know, everything's a recording, everything's an illusion. That is either one hell of a lip sync or she knew exactly how to sing it. And then again, the guy who's saying everything's an illusion, the trumpets, he's going, <laughs> and cueing the trumpets exactly, so they obviously they're trained. But actually, you know, a box just randomly appears. Where did this box come from? It's like Betty just reaches into her purse and it's like, oh, it's a box. Look at this. There's a little triangle in this hand. decision. It's the exact same thing that we found a key. By the way, they found a key in her purse. In um, Rita's purse. It's a blue key, like a moon, like an um, Pokemon moon. Same exact moon shape. And it's a key, it's like a triangle. Along with like, you know, a good, a good solid $10,000. Okay, let's go with that. So they find the box, they bring it home, and Rita's about to open it, and Betty's nowhere to be found. Two thirds of the movie was a goddamn dream. Are you kidding me? I knew that was gonna happen too. I'm thinking, wait a minute. No, don't you fucking do it. Don't you fucking do it to me. As soon as they got home, as soon as they got home, like, is everything gonna be a dream? Is it going to end with everything being a dream? Sure enough, they w she wakes up. She opens the box. They get sucked in. Okay. Cool. Okay. Weird, but okay. And she wakes up. Then things get even weirder. So during the movie, 
um, while they were trying to figure out who Rita is. Because when Rita got into the car crash, she got amnesia. So, Rita just made up her name. Um, so while Betty and Rita were looking to find out who the heck she is, Rita remembers a name, Diane. Which, they found her. But she was dead. They, she committed suicide, you could tell, because her face is like all gross. I'll probably throw a picture up later, but... It was weird. But Rita was like panicking. She almost started screaming. But Betty was like, no, 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 no. Don't you dare scream. If you scream, we might get in trouble. And like, Rita was like having headaches or like whatever. It was weird. But um, when Rita or whoever the fuck it is woke up, she was the person who committed suicide. She woke up in that same room. Different hair, because it was weird. It was so weird. She woke up. She had a different name, different everything. All right, I should probably explain. The director scenes. The director basically got threatened. He, sh the uh, mafia. I'll call them the mafia. I don't know who the fuck they are, but the mafia basically shows a picture to the director and says, "This is the girl. Her name was Cynthia." And no, was it Cynthia? No, it wasn't Cynthia. Oh my god. It was, um... Camilla! Her name was Camilla. I couldn't think of the name. Um... But what ended up happening... Is... You kind of get a clue, but it's very far-fetched. Um... Let me go back. There's a lot of back and forth going on. So, just bear with me. After Betty's audition, you know, while Al's still in the dream, he, she meets the director. Um, the director's name's Adam. Yes, her name's, his name is Adam. And he's trying to do movie scenes. And there's his first girl named Diane. And was it Diane? It was never known what her name was. But the next girl's name was Camilla. And that's what he said, this is the girl. So, when uh, Rita slash Diane woke up, she woke up, got her coffee, there was a blue key on the, ca the dining room. And who walks in? The person who switched apartments with her. So it was like, before Betty and uh, Rita found a dead corpse? It gets weird, because I'm like, when I was watching this, I'm like, why are you here? Why are you awake? What is happening? Next thing you know, she's getting a pot of coffee. She's walking over. And there's just boobs again. And then Diane just sits on top of Camilla. They're going at it. And I'm thinking, what is this fucking what? Why did, how? When did you lose your top? She's in a bathroom. How did you do that? So, um... It's known that they're married. Um, Diane's watching Camilla do her scenes with the director. Kind of inferencing something's going on. Next thing you know, freaking Diane is masturbating, and you're thinking, oh, I, did I knew there was a suicide. There was going to be suicide. Obviously, the course was going to happen. And I'm starting to get the connections, and I'm thinking, is this chick who committed suicide? Spoiler alert, yes, it is. When she's just sitting there on the couch, you can hear her like going, like hearing this. I'm scratching my arm. I'm scratching my arm. <laughs> but um, I'm thinking, oh, she's probably just nails across her skin. It makes sense. It made too much sense. The next thing you know, it's just going down. Her face is like an agony. Thinking, okay, maybe she. I'm right. See tits, like the nipples through the shirt. Okay. Maybe she's sweating. White shirt. It happens. Her hands are in her pants. I'm thinking, what the fuck is happening? I'm like, okay. So every headache you get is an orgasm. Fucking fantastic. At this point in time, I'm thinking, I just, I, I've given up. I've given up on the movie. It's, I guess, it just makes no sense. 
one of the very early scenes is there's this dude talking to a detective. I think it's a detective. Saying, oh, there's this face behind a dumpster. I never want to see that face again. And it's like freaking Boogeyman. Okay. Okay, let's go with that. So, Diane ends up going to a party with um, Camilla. And you see a phone ringing. And earlier on, when they're like playing telephone, like the mafia's playing telephone, you see that phone. Same exact phone. But nobody answers the first time. Who answers the phone is Diane. Now things are starting to make sense. So Diane picks up the phone, and it's Camilla saying, hey, there's a car outside. And what happens? There's the exact same beginning, only it's Diane. Not... It's Diane, who was Rita in the dream sequence. And it's weird, too, because it looks like they switched positions. Like, Diane looked like Betty. Which you kind of hint at something's going on when... Um, Rita gets her wig after seeing the dead body. That it looks just like Betty. So you're saying, okay, something's clicking here. Um, how did she get the name Betty from a guy in a diner? A uh, lady in a diner. Which is actually, ironically, what happened when Rita remembered the name Diane. Because the lady was wearing a name tag that said Diane. It's weird. It's weird trying to explain it. You're probably not going to get it. But if you want to watch the movie, if you feel like you can handle the movie, let me say that. I mean, I recommend watching it. It's definitely a head scratcher. Um, so what's up, and what's up happening is the name's um, Mulholland Drive. And yet, I'm wondering, where the hell's Mulholland Drive? That's the director's house. And you see it, and you're like, oh, okay. Where's this? It just randomly appears. So they just take a shortcut, um, Camilla and Diane, they just take a shortcut up through the woods, and then um, they tell a story about how Camilla was the girl, you know, and Diane got jealous of that. My thought process, and this is what my professor said too, is Diane was the girl that's like, oh, I'm that girl, you know, blah, 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 I can do this, you know, my manager's gonna be on your ass. As well as I am. Next thing you know, Camilla was there, and that's when uh, Adam's like, "This is the girl." Well, Adam ends up having a like, you know, liking Camilla as like m more than just a lover. Next thing you know, they're making out, and they're about to say that they're gonna get married, but never do. Um, next thing you know, Camilla also kisses a random chick. They're like. You know, after what this movie's been going through so far with a random masturbation scene and just kits everywhere. Sure, throw that in. At this point, I think the plot just decided to twist itself and throw it out the window. For real. It's gotten so weird at this point. But then, right before they were gonna say, you know, oh, Camilla and I are getting married. Or have a baby. I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, Diane just leaves. And it kinda goes back to the couch, where she's having her coffee. So I'm like, are you just remembering all this? You just remember, <laughs> fucking what? And the next thing you know, random old people just show up and scare her to shoot her in the head. Again, just throw that in there. It's, uh, fuck. you see them earlier. In the very, 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 very beginning, once Betty gets off the plane, and apparently they were talking. And the box, according to somebody who looked it up, represents innocence. You know, old people, just random grumbling old people. That's weird. I thought that was a dream. I thought she was going to wake up from a dream, within a dream. I seriously thought that. For a split second, until next thing you know, she's screaming from the old people. She reaches into her freaking dresser, pulls out a gun, and goes BANG! And I'm like... Well, now I know how she died. And you thought, you would have thunk, that would have ended. Right then and there. Smoke just fills the room, creds start rolling. Mm -mm. 
Thanks, you know, it's playing through um, two scenes with Rita and Betty, which afterwards it makes sense. I'm thinking, oh, that's who those people are, because it did the same thing in the beginning before it rolled Mahal and Drag, blah, 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 credits, who's who played who. That made sense. That was, I think that was the only thing that made sense in that entire movie. But nope, it does not end there. Next thing you know, the staff from the Silencio movie is there. And the lady you see in the upper, you know, balcony, you know, you see her. She doesn't say a word. She just sits there. She's just like, sitting there with her hands on her stomach, just sitting there like she's in a trance, like she smoked one too many marijuanas. And she only says one word. Silencio. She goes, Silencio. And then the credits start rolling. You're like, you're not going to explain that? Are you kidding me? <sighs> it's a weird movie. I'm trying not to get it over-exaggerated. You guys probably lost your hearing after me screaming. <sighs> I think I covered the bare bones of that movie. I try not to give too much away. I kind of gave some of the big scenes away from freaking Betty and Rita having sex between how not Camilla Diane killed herself. Um, which now I'm thinking about it kind of makes sense because after Diane and some other ladies switched apartments, you found Diane dead. And, and it was weird because when Diane woke up, went over to her switchy screw, she said, oh come on, it's been three weeks. And I'm thinking... No, 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 no. She was not asleep for three weeks. You cannot pull that card on me. She was not sleeping for three weeks. No way in hell. Was she? I don't know. But fucking, if someone could be resurrected within the movie, sure, add that in. Why the fuck not? But it was based off of a book and some other weird noir movie. I don't know what the movie's called. I keep forgetting the name of the movie. But apparently there's everyone remembers that name because it has the same word eyeballs being cut open. Okay. Throw that into the mix. Apparently it's a cousin of that. Again, throw that into the mix. It was a very good movie though. As much as I got very confused. It got my attention. Definitely got my attention. Um one thing I was questioning was how does the director know Betty? Because they look at each other a lot. It's almost like the director knew Betty. I'm getting stuffed up now. Wow, holy crap. Ugh. But it was a good movie. Is Again, as much as I'm ragging and raging on this movie, and as much as I'm getting stuffed up over this movie, ugh. hang on a sec. All right, so as much as I'm ragging and raging on this movie, it's not a bad movie. It was pretty entertaining. It got my attention, definitely. And... It's, it's fucking weird. It was one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Only because near the end, she's starting to wake up and everything's just starting not to make sense. No, and towards the end, it also never made sense. Reality just didn't make sense. But... I tried to fit pieces together because... In the dreamscape... You know, obviously, if you see somebody, you incorporate them in your dreams. I know that for a fact, because whenever I dream, I wanted to make a video about this for a while, about my dreams. Um, I see people I know. And I have fucking weird-ass dreams. So, I should probably be the one to talk. But, I know when I dream and I recognize something that I've seen, or someone I've seen... That makes sense. It's weird though from the dreamscape to reality how Rita slash Diane incorporated this little her name's Coco. This little little tiny woman. This little tiny well oh, this little tiny old woman. And you're like, oh she's cute. Okay, she's chill. From being the apartment owner to the director's mom. It's a big jump. Okay, fine. It seems like the only one that stayed constant was the director. The director was still the director, regardless of the fact. Um, but 
Man, wow, actually now I'm thinking about it. The director was the, still the director regardless of the fact. Diane and Betty switch roles. I'm trying not I am trying not to make sense of this movie. I just kinda had that, oh wow, crap. That's one of the things that actually stayed the same. Um But yeah, she incorporated people she's seen into her dream. Including this one guy, this one guy she's having to look at. In her dream, it was the guy that pat the had a heart attack after seeing the boogeyman. Who was turns out to be a homeless guy. Who apparently had the box. In the real world, he's just sitting there, fiddling with the box. Who puts it in the bag and drops it. Next thing you know, the little gremlin old people escape from it. Okay, fine. Again, after the how this movie's been going, let's add that. What would I rate this movie? I honestly don't know what to rate it. Would I recommend watching it? If you are prepared. Yes. Because I know my professor's like, alright, adult content, there's gonna be nudity, there's gonna be some harsh, you know, language world, adults basically, we can handle an F-bomb here or there. Um, he said there's also some disturbing content, including depression, suicide, and all that crap. I'm generalizing. Uh, he obviously didn't say that, he took this very seriously. As am I. Um, but you're just like, Obviously, if the chick killed herself, there's suicide and depression. Because she's upset because she doesn't have her lover anymore. Okay. And... Killing yourself... In spite of being sad... In a movie... In a movie... Makes sense. And again, this director's like, that, that, that makes too much sense. So, she decided to have the spirits of the innocents, a.k.a ghostly old people scare her into shock and sheer terror that she pulls out her gun she randomly has laying her in her dresser and shoots herself in the head. That makes sense. But for real, if you can't handle depression or suicidal topics in a movie, I would not recommend this movie at all. Um, to be honest, it is a split between would I recommend it or would I not recommend it. I would recommend it because it is a good movie, and it is one of the classics. It was actually called, at one point in time, one of the greatest movies of the 21st century. Um, that's the reason itself to watch it. Would I watch it again? After a few years. Because right now, I still need time to digest what the fuck I watched last night. <laughs> but, um... Oh, God, I moved my camera. But if you can't handle nudity, if you can't handle disturbing topics such as the depression and suicide, if you can't handle stuff not making sense, then no, I wouldn't recommend watching this movie. But, like I said, it was, it was a pretty good movie. Um, the other three, it's kind of split as well, with the uh, Howl's Moving Castle. If you like anime and you're interested in seeing a different topic, go nuts. Um, obviously, if you don't like anime, then don't watch it. Um, run a little run. It's a very, that's a very, very weird movie, too. That's up there with uh, Mulholland Drive. Um, only because it's in German. So, again, watch it with subtitles. Um, if you can understand German, more power to you. Go ahead, try to watch it without subtitles, but I wouldn't. Um, I also never took German. It's very weird because of the aspect of resetting. Um, they just reset at a certain point in time, like in Undertale, how you just have the power to reset. It's just weird how she starts screaming and things just start happening. That's the only thing. I wouldn't recommend watching it, to be honest. If you want to, go nuts. Um, but I wouldn't recommend watching it. And the last one being Pulp Fiction. Absolutely, definitely watch it because of Samuel L. Jackson. 
um, with that iconic line. That, that very iconic line. Anyways, that's it for movie review, guys. Woo! So, I kind of had to catch up because I had four movies to cover in one. Um, and I tried not to do any spoilers. So, from now on, every Friday. Every Friday will be movie review. And I may sneak in a spoiler. Obviously, I snuck in spoilers for um, freaking Mulholland Drive, but whatever. I have, to, I have to to talk about it because it's just so weird. So I should probably go, spoilers! Just to get your attention, you know. How would you feel if this movie if it just starts out next thing you know here? Hey! Listen up! Uh, um, yeah. Is that really it? If you actually like a little shade in pace, um, please definitely leave a like. And, um, subscribe for more and hit that bell. I'd appreciate it. And share this with your friends, too, so you can join on this shit show. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Take care. I misbehaved. This is how I feel. That's how I feel about this movie.